Now Muslim students in Britain aren't strangers to the spotlight, but last week things came to a head when students at Queen Mary University of London were forced to stage a protest in light of inadequate prayer facilities. To find out more, early this week I paid a visit to the campus. Queen Mary University of London hosts one of the biggest Islamic societies in Britain. An active and engaged society of young Muslims, it has come to be known as one of the most pronounced. But for the last two weeks, hundreds on site had to brave the rain to pray their Friday congregational prayers. This was in protest of inadequate facilities provided by the university. Faraz Khan, an engineering student from the Islamic Society, told me about what had happened. Queen Mary has, if not the biggest, population of Muslims in the, in the whole of the UK. For this Friday's prayer, it was actually approximately 500 brothers, and that were just brothers that were congregating on this prayer protest outside on the grass. I mean, it's more so a freedom of expression, that's what we're trying to emphasize on. We're not really trying to cause an issue with the college, we're just really trying to show the fact that we're asking for what we have simply had before, which were the adequate facilities, the hall and the octagon building, which are, are both big enough. The society had previously used other large spaces at the university, but from the start of this academic year have been told the rooms are no longer available. We had had our Jummah, the congregational prayers, in those buildings, so it's basically a little bit strange the fact that we're not So what has changed? What's changed in that you can no longer use those facilities that were um, given to you beforehand and they're not... Well, I mean, as we're being told at this point in time that there are bookings that are... You know, we're not able to use them. It's actually not 100% clear why it is that we're not able to use them. That's actually one of the reasons for this campaign, because on one of the days, um, we were in the MFC, which we were very constricted by. Again, security come up and do prevent us from the numbers filling over, and some brothers actually turned away from the prayers, and sisters do not attend at all. The Friday congregational prayer is compulsory upon Muslim men, and the students here at Queen Mary are keen to highlight their protest is in order to emphasise the prayer's significance. The fact that this campaign is actually just trying to push on the fact that we're really trying to find our own prayer place that we can, for, for the Friday especially, that, that is what this campaign is about. Because we're all about unity and we respect all other faiths on, on, society, on, on campus, but we really want to interact in the right way and for them to really appreciate the fact that we have obligations to fulfil as well. A demonstration to move forward rather than that to antagonise relations with the university. We're looking at approximately about a thousand, you know, that's a vast number of practicing people that we're really trying to accommodate for. And that's what we really want the college to understand. We're not just trying to demand for more and more, but we just want them to understand that, look, you've given us this facility in the past, why can't we have it again? Muslim students seem to come under the spotlight often. A clampdown on speakers and a tightening up of adequate facilities, with at least 200,000 Muslim students here in Britain and over 120 Islamic societies across the country. Like all other students, they need to be able to practice freely and continue to flourish. Now joining me to discuss the situation at Queen Mary and with student societies overall are Omar Ali, president of FOSIS, the Federation of Student Islamic Societies, and Ahmed Babat, campaign representative for Queen Mary. Now, Ahmed, can I come straight to you to ask you what's happening? Well. Sister Yasmin, what's happened is that the university used to provide prayer facilities for the Friday Congregational Prayer. Now, we get between 500, or rather four and 500 students every single week, students and staff, men and women, um, for the Friday Congregational Prayer. And the multi-faith centre that was built by the university last year, fantastic facility, just does not cope for the numbers. Um, it fits between 200 and 300 people at the very most. So students are praying outside on the stairs um, during Friday prayers. Health and safety hazards, massive issues. We need a facility that's well, large enough. Well, these issues raised before the new facility was built, did they not know the capacity of students that would be coming in to pray? No, they were raised. And the thing is that in the past, the university and other universities do the same. They have a separate facility for Friday prayers, the sports hall, the great hall, the octagon. Right. These are different facilities that are given out just for the Friday prayers. For the five daily prayers, the multi-faith centre, fantastic, great facility, but not adequate for the Friday prayer. Now, I've got a statement from the university here. I did ask them to tell us as to why this was taking place. And they said that the as with all London-based universities, space is limited and their priority is to provide lecture and seminar rooms. That's justified. Omar? Well, it, it is true that uh, the number of uh, students are increasing in universities across the United Kingdom, but it is not a legitimate uh, reason to shut down uh, the Juma facilities. This is an absolute need. This is not some kind of uh, you know, uh, want that the Muslim students are asking for going beyond their means. This is something that many universities across the entire United Kingdom and Ireland 
um, who many of the Islamic societies who are affiliated to us are being provided very straightforward. It's it's a it's very um, it's very upsetting to see Muslim students praying out. Um, Bring out in, in the cold. And we saw that in that feature. I mean, I discovered myself that Queen Mary has a very active and lively ISOC. Um, so why is it that you think they've come under this sort of pressure? I, I would have thought that they would have, it would have been the last place that this would have happened. Well, um, I think that this is the, the third time in, in probably the last decade that uh, there have been major issues with regards to prayer facilities at uh, QM. But this is also another issue that's happening across the country. Unfortunately, Muslim students are under a lot of fire, a lot of pressure um, on a range of different things. And prayer rooms are kind of one of the, the forerunners of problems. And it's unfortunate. Um, the reasons why um, are, not, uh, are not very rational. Um, and there seems to be a, a, you know, a great stigma attached to the way that people uh, treat, uh, treat Muslim students. And uh, all we can do is do our best to try to, you know, to reverse the, the, you know, these types of decisions and, and to, you know, to showcase the great work that Muslim students do. I mean, we've heard recently about speakers coming into university being banned, different things being closed down. Now, is this, is this a wider scope of things that are taking place? Omar, if I could come to you first. Yeah, sure. I mean, this has been increasing over the years. Um, last year, there was, of course, um, and probably this year, um, student rights, um, which was leading the way alongside Harry's Place and other kind of uh, uh, neoconservative, um, you know, right wing, you know, blogs. And they would cause a lot of problems. Um, thankfully, last year, we worked very closely with the National Union of Students and we managed to totally discredit student rights. Um, uh, you know, and, and we'll continue to do that because a lot of them are just knee jerk, very reactionary and very Islamophobic. And if I can briefly ask you as well, have you been facing these sorts of issues at Queen Mary? We have faced the issues. Um, our message to the university is very clear. As the ISOC, we're the largest student society on campus. We represent more than 20% of the student population. Queen Mary is our university. As students of the university, the success of the university is our success. We want to work with the university in achieving the very best. And we want Queen Mary to be the best university in the UK for its provision of prayer facilities and for its multicultural diversity. Right, we are going to have to move on now. Now, lots of different stories have been trending throughout the week. Let's have a look at some of the things that you've been tweeting about. Trending on Twitter this week, Kenneth Clark unveiled his feelings on the face veil, with others asking if the veil was divisive. Syria also stayed in sight, with fears for a British aid worker in Aleppo. As Remembrance Day approaches, many made clear their position on wearing a red poppy, a white one or none at all. Controversy surrounding the death of Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat also set Twitter alight. Right, we saw there a few different things. Now, poppies, has they, lots of people have been tweeting about this, a lot of people saying, no, you shouldn't wear one, you should wear one, wear a white poppy. Ahmed? I like the idea of the white poppy. Um, personally, to me, the red poppy, it represents a lot of, it represents war, in essence, um, and being against war in all sort of kinds of forms, I, I like the idea of the white poppy much better. Omar? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of sensitive, um, but I, I think it really depends on why you're wearing it and what you are, you know, what the reason is. If we're talking about the sacrifices made in, in World War II, many by Muslims as well, then I think there is a, there's, there's a justification there. Right. Unfortunately, that is all we've got time for this evening. I want to thank all of my guests, Ahmed Obat, Omar Ali, Sayyid Al Alevi and Martin Linton for joining us. And of course, you at home for watching. Remember to keep up with the Twitter conversation using hashtag the report. We will be following stories throughout the week, so do keep tweeting. If you prefer, you can email us your thoughts on the report at islamchannel.tv. And many of us have been asked Many of you have been asking about previous programs, so do watch and go onto our YouTube channel at Islam Channel TV. But for now, we'll leave you some seeds from Sri Lanka, where just a week before Commonwealth leaders meet for the Sri Lanka summit, thousands of opposition supporters have been marching through the capital. They've been demanding more freedoms and an upholding of human rights. Do tune in next week to join us for your report. But until then, from all of us here, Assalamu Alaikum. <laughs>